Pakistan, for Bangladesh, for Afghanistan, for Sri Lanka and other neighbors. And it spells great danger for non-Hindus in India. We need not prolong this discussion because we believe that our audience will understand the relationship between this philosophy of history and contemporary politics in India. But you also have Christianity and Judaism and Islam in the world. And then you have one more actor in the world which has become the dominant actor on the stage of history. It came into the world fairly recently, whereas Hinduism has been in the world for thousands of years and Judaism for thousands of years. This fellow only came yesterday, but already has occupied center stage modern Western civilization. Christianity holds the view that history began with the creation of the first human being, Adam alayhi salam. Judaism holds the same view and Islam holds the same view. And so this is human history. And there is other, apart from human history, there is the history of the universe. History began both for Christianity, for Judaism, and for Islam. History began in a world beyond this world. The first chapter in the book of history was written in another world. Namely, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our father Adam alayhi salam and created his wife, our mother Hawa, Eve, and told them both to go and live in paradise. And then events occurred in paradise which profoundly affected history that a, an evil being, well he was not created evil, no, he is a jinn and all jinn and all human beings were created by Allah to worship him. But this one, when he was ordered to bow down and prostrate before Adam alayhi salam refused to do so. Why should I bow before him? You created me from fire and you created him from clay and fire is superior to clay. It follows logically therefrom that I am superior to him. Why then should I bow? I'm not doing that. And so he became a kafir, a kafir, a disbeliever. And he then seduced, seduced our parents. In the Christian and Jewish view, he first seduced the woman. And she then seduced her husband but not in Islam. In Islam, he seduced them both. And if anyone has the greater responsibility, it will be the husband and not the wife. History then had the rest of his chapters here on earth. The culminating point of history for Christianity 
the supreme moment in history for Christianity was when when God incarnated took human form and appeared on earth in flesh and blood in the person of Jesus this is the golden moment in history and after that every subsequent moment of history recorded downward movement that mankind is moving downwards linear movement regressive going down but there is going to be an end of history says Christianity when God will return in the person of Nabi Isa alayhi salam and when he comes back he's going to come back to Jerusalem and so history will end in the Holy Land with the return of Jesus alayhi salam and that return of Jesus alayhi salam would validate the Christian claim to truth before Jesus can return to the Holy Land most Christians are agreed that the holy state of Israel will have to be restored so when they saw an Israel born in 1948 most Christians have come to the conclusion that this is the holy Israel of Nabi Dawood the prophet David alayhi salam and Nabi Suleiman the prophet Solomon alayhi salam and that it is as a consequence of the restoration of holy Israel in the Holy Land that we can now conclude that we are close to the end of history and that the return of Jesus alayhi salam is close it is at hand this has had a profound influence on foreign policy in the United States of America no, no less a man than George Bush was conducting the foreign policy of the United States of America based on this vision of the end of history and that Muslims are the obstacle obstacle in the way for the triumph and validation of the Christian claim to truth in Holy Jerusalem we now come to the Jewish view of the end of history that in the same way that the Hindus hold the view that they are a chosen people they are the elite of mankind the Brahman so too the Jews share with the Christians this belief that they are the chosen people of all of mankind and that heaven is reserved for them and I invite them from this Masjid al Hidayah here in Kuala Lumpur I invite them to kindly correct me if I'm wrong that they are the elite of mankind that heaven is restored is reserved for them that the golden age of Judaism was that moment in time when the prophet David Nabi Dawood alayhi salam established the holy state of Israel and that holy Israel ruled the world from Jerusalem and that his son the prophet Solomon Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam built the temple the masjid and took that Israel to its 
supreme position of power in the world. An example